Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Elizabeth Barraza? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Elizabeth Barraza was born in Elk Grove Village, Illinois, on June 26, 1989. She went by the name Liz. She had one older brother named Robert. Throughout her life, Liz lived in various states in addition to Illinois, including Missouri, Florida, and Texas. She graduated from high school in Texas in 2008 and attended Sam Houston State University, earning a bachelor's degree in psychology in 2012. In 2009, when Liz was still in college, she met a man named Sergio, and they became romantically involved. The couple married on February 1, 2014. Liz found work as a data reporter, and her husband installed flooring for a living. In April 2016, the couple bought a house in Tumball, Texas, which is northwest of Houston. The neighborhood where they lived was called Princeton Place. Liz and Sergio were big fans of the Star Wars movies. They were members of a group that dressed up in Star Wars costumes. They were not simple costumes. This couple took this interest quite seriously. The costumes that they made were comparable to the ones used in the movies. In January 2019, the couple was planning on taking a trip to Orlando, Florida. They were going to visit Disney World and Universal Studios. This trip was to celebrate their fifth wedding anniversary, which was coming up on February 1. Their plan was to depart for Florida on January 27. On January 24, 2019, Liz and Sergio placed signs in their neighborhood advertising a yard sale, which they were planning on running for two days, both Friday, January 25, and Saturday, January 26. The idea was to earn a little bit of money to buy souvenirs in Florida. Even though the couple was financially responsible and did not need money for that trip, the garage sale was not advertised on social media. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On January 25, 2019, at about 2 a.m., a black Nissan Frontier pickup truck was captured on security cameras in the Princeton Place neighborhood. At about 6.08 a.m., Liz departed her residence and drove to Starbucks to get coffee. She arrived home at 6.16 a.m. and started setting up the garage sale. For about the next half hour or so, her husband Sergio helped her with the setup. At 6.47 a.m., the Nissan Frontier pulled into the neighborhood again and drove to a parking lot of a school. A few seconds later, the pickup truck pulled out of the parking lot and moved to a different area not far away. Around this same time, Sergio left the neighborhood to go to work. About three minutes later, the Nissan Frontier started driving toward Liz's house. The driver of the pickup truck parked on the street behind Liz's vehicle at 6.52 a.m. The driver exited the truck. The engine was left running. It's not clear if the driver was a man or a woman. They may have been wearing a wig and perhaps some type of robe. The driver walked up to Liz. At this time, Liz was still setting up the garage sale. Liz said something like, good morning, and she and the mysterious visitor spoke to each other for about six seconds. At this point, the driver of the pickup truck produced a revolver and shot Liz four times total. The first three shots were fired in quick succession. Liz was struck in the neck and twice in the chest. After Liz fell to the driveway, the shooter walked toward her, stood over her, and shot her one more time in the head. The shooter ran back to the pickup truck and drove away at about 6.53 a.m. Three different neighbors called 911 after hearing the four gunshots. The pickup truck left the neighborhood, but then the driver made a U-turn and re-entered the neighborhood. It passed by the Barraza residence not even two minutes after the shooting. After this, the truck somehow exited the neighborhood. Liz was transported to a hospital where she died the next day, January 26, at 1.40 p.m. At the time making this video, the murder of Elizabeth Barraza is unsolved. 
Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, Liz Barraza was a very well-liked individual. She was an active member of the Star Wars cosplay community to such an extent that she was involved in charitable work. For example, she would dress up as Star Wars characters and visit children in hospitals. Liz was risk-averse. She did not like taking chances. Before living in the Princeton Place neighborhood, Liz lived in an apartment that was burglarized. She was aware of safety issues. On the morning she was killed, Liz had closed the door leading from the interior of the garage into the house and set the alarm so that it would go off if she opened the door. It appears as though she was trying to set up an escape plan if something went wrong at the garage sale, like she would run to the house and that would trigger the alarm. This type of behavior was not unusual for Liz. This was not a precaution she was taking just on the day she was killed. Item number two, the police investigated the history of Liz and her husband. They could not find any reason that anyone would want to kill Liz. She was not involved in crime, drugs, infidelity, or other activities that would increase her risk of being killed. One of the most common ways to solve homicide cases is to figure out the motive. But in this case, there is no way to know what the motive was. It doesn't make sense that anyone would have had a motive. There was no obvious reason for anyone to murder Liz. Item number three, the killer appeared to be specifically targeting Liz. This wasn't a random killing. The individual who shot Liz appeared to be stalking her, waiting for the right opportunity. For example, the killer, or at least someone driving the killer's truck, was in the neighborhood hours before the shooting. The killer appeared to wait for Sergio to leave the neighborhood. It's hard to imagine the timing was a coincidence. The killer walked directly up to Liz and shot her a few seconds later. The killer did not target anyone else. Nothing was taken from the crime scene, and the perpetrator didn't even touch anything at the crime scene. A revolver was used in the murder, which meant that no cartridge cases were left behind. Item number four. After the killer drove away in the pickup truck, They came back to Liz's house less than two minutes later, which was just 58 seconds after the first neighbor called 911. This was an extremely risky move that doesn't appear to make any sense. Was the killer trying to make sure that Liz was dead? If she was moving around, what was the killer going to do? Stop the pickup truck and shoot her again? After passing the house again, the killer drove down a dead-end street. It's not clear how they managed to exit the neighborhood. They may have briefly driven off-road and then made their way back to a street. Item number five, the killer made a few mistakes and unusual decisions during the course of the murder. A few examples, briefly speaking with Liz did not make much sense if the killer was there simply to end her life. Maybe the killer wanted Liz to know who they were and why they were there. Like this killing was for revenge and would not be satisfying if Liz didn't understand what was going on. The killer used a revolver. Most revolvers hold five or six cartridges in the cylinder, but the killer only fired four times. Even running under the assumption that this was a five-shot revolver and not a six-shot revolver, why not use the last round? Especially considering that the killer was so worried about accomplishing the mission, they drove by the house after the shooting. There are a few possible reasons the killer only fired four times, They panicked when they were shooting Liz. They lost track of how many times they pulled the trigger. They didn't want to spend the extra half second at the crime scene. Or they wanted to save at least one cartridge for themselves. Like this killer was not going to allow themselves to be captured alive. As far as the killer's gun handling skills, in the video of the shooting, it looks as though the killer is not that familiar with how to handle a pistol. When they fired the second and the third shots, They kind of made a thrusting or stabbing motion with the revolver, like they were pushing their hand forward as they pulled the trigger. This is something commonly seen in people who are not familiar with firing a pistol. Almost like the shooter was afraid of the gun, surprised by how loud it was, and unsure of when pulling the trigger would actually make the gun discharge, like where in the trigger pull the hammer would be released. The shooter did not lock their elbow as they should have. Some people believe that the killer selected a revolver to avoid leaving cases at the scene. 
but I think that the killer may have selected this weapon simply because that's what they had available. Item number six, the black Nissan Frontier was a Pro 4X crew cab. It was a 2013 or newer. Compared to other pickup trucks, the Nissan Frontier is not particularly common. Using 2013 sales figures as an example, Nissan sold about 62,000 Frontiers. That same year, Toyota sold 159,000 Tacomas. This is also a mid-size pickup truck. Comparing the mid-size sales to full-size pickup sales, we see that Ford sold about 2.4 million F-150s in 2013. The people in the neighborhood said they had never seen that Nissan Frontier driving through that area before. The police did everything they could do to find the pickup truck, but they did not have success. Item number seven, it's not clear if the killer was male or female. Statistically, we know that about 90% of murderers and about 80% of murder victims are men. Strictly from this point of view, it's unlikely the killer was a woman. Yet, when looking at the video of the homicide, it's very difficult to tell. The killer had long hair, but this could have been a wig. They were also wearing some type of robe, which may have been a disguise. Perhaps the attacker was someone involved with the cosplay community that Liz belonged to. Item number eight. One of the main questions in this case is, how did the killer know when to approach Liz to commit the homicide? If the killer had come to the house any earlier, Sergio would have been there. If they had come later, people may have been stopping by the garage sale and more neighbors would have been awake. It's almost like they knew the perfect time to stop by the house to catch Liz outside and alone. The killer arrived when Liz was the most vulnerable and when they had the best chance of escaping after shooting her. In addition, the doorbell camera installed on the Barraza house did not really capture much video of the killer, as if the killer knew the camera was there. Only a few people knew that Liz was having a garage sale that day, for example, her parents, her husband, and maybe a few co-workers. There may have been a few other people who knew as well, but this was a small group. Liz did not advertise the garage sale on social media, and this was only the third garage sale that she had since she moved in. So it wasn't like she was having garage sales every weekend, and the killer just had to wait until the next weekend came up. It really seems like the killer had inside information. Item number nine. Some people believe that Sergio could have been involved. The husband of a murdered wife is always a potential suspect. Perhaps he was tired of the relationship or wanted life insurance money. The whole situation with the killer waiting for Sergio to leave gives the impression that the murderer had calculated Sergio into the equation, like they were aware that he lived in the house with Liz, and they knew something about a schedule. Sergio remarried a few years after Liz died, but this is fairly common for husbands who lose their wives. Sergio has acknowledged that he understands why people may regard him as a potential suspect, but he has indicated that he was very upset to lose Liz. They had a good relationship. By all accounts, this appears to be true. There were no signs of distress in the marriage. One possibility here is that the killer is someone that Sergio provided information to, but he didn't know the individual would commit homicide, like the information was gathered from a casual conversation. Maybe the killer wanted to eliminate Liz as romantic competition like they desired to be with Sergio. Item number 10, what are the potential characteristics of the killer, including their personality? I think the killer was very determined to carry out this homicide. They had been in the area hours earlier and probably did not sleep all morning. Whenever somebody is willing to commit a murder without an obvious motive or based on unusual reasoning, it increases the probability that they have personality pathology and or psychosis. The killer probably has a history characterized by violence, emotional instability, impulsivity, and poor decisions. As far as a potential personality profile, they probably had high openness to experience, perhaps to the level of psychosis, low conscientiousness, they were impulsive and had a poor work history, high extroversion, they were excitement seeking, low agreeableness, they were not tender-minded, altruistic, or trusting, and they had high neuroticism. They were angry, vulnerable, and emotionally reactive. 
I do not believe that the killer was paid to commit the homicide, but rather the motive was connected to jealousy, psychosis, sadism, or vindictiveness. It could have also been any combination of those factors. Perhaps the perpetrator was active in the Star Wars cosplay community and started to confuse the real world with the fantasy world. They believed themselves to be like an assassin droid or thought that Liz had been seduced by the dark side of the Force. Maybe Liz insulted the perpetrator without even realizing it. It could have been something very subtle. Perhaps she was commenting on their Chewbacca costume and talked about how the hair was unkempt or was making fun of their lightsaber, saying it looked more like a flashlight with a green lens. It really could have been anything. The person she inadvertently offended was highly vindictive. They kept thinking about how to plot revenge. Eventually, they gained access to information about the garage sale and treated it as if they had found the weakness of the Death Star. The killer realized that this was their best chance to catch Liz in the open. Maybe the individual was so obsessed with Liz that they regularly drove by the neighborhood, like they were stalking her, and they noticed the garage sale sign. This gave them the opportunity they were looking for. Moving to the last item, number 11, which theory do I think is most likely in this case? This is just my opinion. I do not think that Sergio was involved in the death of his wife. I think that the killer must have had some contact with Liz, Sergio, or someone else who knew what Liz was doing on the morning of January 25, 2019. The killer probably had personality pathology and somehow developed an irrational hatred for Liz. They may have developed these feelings from afar. Perhaps there was only the slightest connection between Liz and the killer. Even something as minor as the killer reading social media posts made by Liz. This weak association makes it difficult to find the perpetrator. This was a targeted homicide, but it had a lot of the characteristics of a random killing. Now moving to my final thoughts. With most victims of homicide, there is a clear reason why someone killed them. Infidelity, greed, substance use, impulsivity, domestic violence. But in this case, there's nothing. Liz was a good citizen who had a safe lifestyle. It would appear as though she was murdered by a phantom menace whose motive and identity will likely remain a mystery. Those are my thoughts in the case of Elizabeth Barraza. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.